Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here and it's time to get spooky again. So in a previous video of mine, I took a look at what I considered to be the least scary episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? It was about a ghost that needed his jacket, he was cold, and he was fine in the end. If you want to watch that episode first, then check out the thingy that just popped up in the right hand corner. However, if you want to get down to brass tacks and listen to me discuss what I consider the scariest episode, then sit your butt down and get ready because I'm gonna talk about pools. What? Don't act like you aren't scared. Ah, the tale of the dead man's float, a classic. In case you didn't know, a dead man's float is a position where a swimmer is face down in the water with their limbs sprawled and they just float there, looking dead. Thus the name, dead man's float. Yep. There were several options when it came to Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes that were considered scary or at least memorable. Dead Man's Float was my initial choice, but I decided to explore other options by putting out a very professional poll on Twitter. My mentions, rest in peace, were a smidge cluttered, but I was delighted to find that people pretty much agreed on this episode as being one of the most frightening. Twitter is a cesspool, but at least we can agree on children's horror shows. And yes, I did say cesspool because I thought it was clever, but I can see as I'm reading this that my pool pun game is rather weak. Don't worry though, I'm sure the rest of this video will go swimmingly. <laughs> the other contenders for this video were The Ghastly Grinner, Laughing in the Dark, The Super Specs, and The 13th Floor. All very good suggestions, but I wanted to refrain from talking about clowns. Look, we've used up our scary clown card, let's retire it. And when I say it, I don't mean Stephen King's it because that thing wasn't really a clown. Also, I adore this 90s goth goddess from The Ghastly Grinner. <laughs> Anyway, tangent. I thought the super specs could make for its own unique episode since it seemed inspired by John Carpenter's They Live, so I passed on that and the 13th floor definitely stuck with me, very influenced by the Twilight Zone, but it didn't scare me, it more disturbed me. There's just something frightening about pools. Water in general, really. Yeah, I know we need it to live, and I know 71% makes up the Earth's surface, but when you pour a shit ton of it in a giant hole in the floor, it becomes frightening. Especially to kids, and shows like this, Goosebumps, and Eerie Indiana really knew how to use the common fears of young people. Bad things happen in pools. People pee in them, they drop food in them, and sometimes they have ghosts. It's completely impossible, but maybe there's a shark or an alligator in there. Perhaps a bloody limb, fecal matter, it's all in the damn pool. As we start the episode, we are greeted by the Midnight Society, as is tradition for the beginning and ending of every episode. One of the characters, Tucker, brings in a potential recruit. As he is revealed, he says, hi babe, and kisses Kiki, one of the other members. She is justifiably not pleased with this non-consensual act of affection and refers to him as a puke, a highly underused insult if you ask me. We if we don't think you're a total puke, then you're in. This guy's name is Stig, a rather unfortunate mix of stag and twig. To get initiated, he must prove himself to be a good storyteller and preferably not act like a toilet around the other members. He begins his tale and we open with a flashback scene. Some surfer pop music plays in the background indicating that this is, in fact, the 1950s. I mean, I'm already scared. Ugh. So in a scene that looks like it came straight out of Jaws, we watch as a helpless kid gets pulled under the water as he was swimming. We see the pool bro jump into the water to try to save him, but the scene ends vaguely and segues into modern day. Here's our main character, Zeke. He looks like Thomas Dolby and he's doing chemistry. Weird. Science. Yeah, he's our nerdy, bumbling protagonist that doesn't have a lot of luck with the ladies due to always being preoccupied with his schoolwork. He makes a feeble attempt at winning the interest of Clarice, who is on the school's swim team. You're on the swim team, right? Yes, yeah, so? Uh, well, I'd like to show you something I think you might find interesting. Boner alert. Wait. Wait. Her name is Clarice, and she's a swimmer, and his name is Zeke, who is a geek. Brilliant! A-plus writing! He convinces her to meet him after school, even though he can't seem to handle this Hoberman sphere. Actually, I don't really know if this is a Hoberman sphere, I just wanted to sound smart. Did it work? His answer to not being able to situate it back on the shelf is to steal it! What a fucking rebel! He brings her to the gym's old pool, thinking that she would be impressed as a swimmer. How romantic! Nothing like the smell of mold and chemicals to heighten the mood. Clarice does end up being impressed and suggests trying to convince the school to reopen it because they have to drive an hour away for their swimming lessons. Zeke does not like the idea. But they'll never. Oh, stop. Excuses are for people who never get things done, understand? Yes, mistress. What was the safe word again? As they leave, a weird floating shape is seen through this tarp. Ooh. Oh, hey, it's the janitor. Sup? Clarice manages to convince the school to clean up the pool and voila! Good as new and it only took a couple of weeks, a very realistic vision of school construction. Though the pool looks nice, Clarice and her friend notice it still smells kind of weird, but chalk it up to some dirty pipes. 
Meanwhile, an underwater presence lurks beneath the surface. It almost goes for one of the swim team members, but passes her by as her form was pretty abysmal. Later in science class, Clarice laments over getting a C on her exam and expresses hating the subject. Zeke slides in, literally, and makes his move. He tells her that he could tutor her in science, that being his thing and all. What's in it for you? I get to smell your hair. In return, he asks for swimming lessons because he's always been afraid of the water. I'm going to spare you the details, but what follows is an overly dramatic story about Zeke getting his leg caught in some pond plants. It's dumb, really. It's just a little melodramatic, Zeke. I get it, I got pulled under in one of those wave pools once, but it's not something I bond over with my crush. Even Clarice isn't terribly impressed because when he's done, she's like, okay, I'm out of here. Despite this unnecessarily heavy dialogue, everything on the raft and forward is very tense and would definitely be frightening to a young person. It might even be scary for you now, especially to those who also got their feet stuck in some plants. As Clarice is swimming, trying to show Zeke the water is safe, something tugs her under and you think, oh god, it's the pool ghost. But nope, it's just her annoying friend Greta, who I guess is jealous of her new pity-fueled bond with Zeke. I don't know, she gets all angsty and then just leaves a second later. And now that we have a proper fake out, we can go back to the Jaws shit. You may be thinking, it's okay, they're on a raft. But bad things happen while on rafts, people, you know it. Zeke gets pulled into the water by some unseen force. He manages to get back into the raft, but whatever it is knocks both him and Clarice into the pool. Luckily, Charlie, the janitor, was there and pulls them to safety. Zeke is like, what was that? And Charlie's like, It's back. Tell a friend. Charlie, of course, was the kid in the flashback, and he tells the story about how his girlfriend's little brother was pulled under and drowned by a spirit, then goes on to say the pool was built on a cemetery and all the bodies had to be moved. Charlie thinks that the workers who moved the bodies missed this one, so maybe it's all PO'd that it was left behind. Three more people drowned before they closed it down, and poor Charlie was left traumatized and probably single, if we're honest. Problem is, it's hard to fight something you can't see, so using science. Zeke pours some methyl orange into the pool in hopes of giving the ghost a red tint. Methyl orange reacts with acid. If this thing really is part acid, it'll create chlorine gas and we'll all die. Please don't do chemistry in the pool. The mixture works and we finally get to see our culprit. So this guy is dead? I... I think. Holy shit, this episode isn't messing around. This is a pretty intense costume. The red coloring makes it look bloody, the beard growing out of the decaying skull is pretty disgusting, and I can see why this episode stuck with so many people. Though Zeke's lackluster response kind of ruins it for me. I'm not sure if the actor forgot to react or scream or what, but he's just kind of like, oh crap. Poor Charlie goes into shock, and now that the ghost is visible, he decides to hop out of the water and pop in through the drain pipe. This may explain why drains scare me. Who knows what the hell is gonna crawl up or ooze out of those things. In this case, it seems to be the ooze from the Ghostbusters. Why are my drippings with goo? Clarice recalls from a school experiment that when you mix manganite with water, it will cause an explosion. But Zeke smacks a tub of it out of her hands and informs her to wear gloves. Safety first, people. They go after it and end up in the pool again. But Charlie comes in just in time to redeem himself and save Zeke. Clarice douses this fool with manganite, so much of it that I was sure the entire building would explode. He dissolves into the pool with a dramatic puff of smoke. Guess he was too cool for pool. Yeah, that's right, deal with it. Well, that was nice. And of course, the nerd gets the girl. I love how as they're floating in the pool, he basically tells her to go for a swim so he can read his science book. You wanna go for a swim? Sure. What the hell was that? You're holding my book wrong, please leave. The moral of the story is to always pay attention during chemistry. It's poetry in motion. This kid looks like Thomas Dolby. As deep as any ocean. He's working on some chemistry. She killed this thing with science. The Midnight Society enjoyed Stig's story, but still find him smelly, so they won't be initiating him quite yet. They do invite him to come back and tell more stories to see if he has what it takes, and Kiki bluntly tells him to take a shower. After rewatching this episode, it's easy to see why people found it scary. I think it's interesting how our fears evolve from adolescence to adulthood. When I saw the ghost take form, I didn't quite understand the fear I may have felt as a child, because the things I'm most afraid of in adulthood aren't tangible. Things like the unknown, my mortality, my self-worth, that weird tapping noise in the attic. I was more fearful prior to seeing the ghost because monsters aren't a real fear for me anymore, versus a child's fear. Things like gross-looking skulls, scary ooze seeping out of 
drains, visuals, and the appearance of something that isn't real was the most frightening to me. When I was young, I can even recall going to a store with my mom around Halloween time and being grossed out by all of the advertisements, the signs, the masks. Now I'm all like, shit, I have to pay my quarterlies. Are You Afraid of the Dark was always very good at making fears you would have in childhood come to life, and that's why it was so effective. It might not be scary to us as adults, but the show is a great example of how to write horror for young adults. Though I'm pretty sure the most disturbing thing in this show is still the intro. There's this weird clown doll, a lonely canoe, this fucking fan. It reminds me of when I didn't have AC in hot, humid Chicago. Now that is scary. The Dead Man's Float, I would give it an 8 out of 10 on the spooky meter. If you have an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark that you would love to see me cover, please let me know in the comments. Until then, stay creepy. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching my breakdown on Dead Man's Float. If you're interested in more children's horror, then definitely check out my channel. I have two videos linked in the description, one on the least scary episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark, and one on a very strange episode of Goosebumps. I'd also like to take this time to tell you about my Patreon campaign. I know this may come as a shock to you, but I sort of need money to live, and becoming a patron helps me to do just that. You get rewards, like postcards and other weird crap. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.